Welcome back to another beautiful day in the land of music. My name is Douglas, and today we've got an exciting unboxing to do. I pre-ordered this keyboard controller a while back, and it finally came the brand new M-Audio Oxygen Pro. In my case, I get the 25 key. They've got a 49 and a 61 key version as well. We're gonna open this bad boy up, take a look at it together. I have not opened this yet. I've been waiting to do this video so I can share my first thoughts with you guys. We'll take a look together, play around with the controls, see what we think of the key bed, and talk about the reasons I went for this keyboard controller as my next dedicated controller. So let's get right into it. I'm gonna flip this up, pull these two little tabs down. Let's open this guy up here. And going to slide everything out just like this. Empty box goes over here. Set these aside for now. Woohoo! Pull the little foam ends off, get rid of those. Bagged up nicely for us. Let's take it out of the bag. And right out of the bat, it's a hefty controller. I'll do a comparison video between this and the other controller that I have. I'm guessing the reason this is heavier than my other controller, which is the same size, is that M-Audio went with semi-weighted keys even on the 25 key version. Really excited about that. And I'll talk more about the specs here in a minute, but let's take the plastic off of the top of the keys, off of the screen itself. Oh, I love these little. And then there's a little piece of paper on the front we're gonna take out and T-Bed feels really good. Let's check out what's in this bag before we talk more about the keyboard. We've got owner's manual and warranty information here. I'm gonna be spending a lot of time diving into the owner's manual so that I can do a nice technical video for you guys on how to set up and use this synthesizer. Download the included software, little card right here. And then finally, we've got the USB cable right here. So this is just my first thoughts video. I'm gonna do a second video of setting this up in Pro Tools, so be on the lookout for that. Let's talk about why I went with this particular keyboard controller and this version of it. So M-Audio has made a new Oxygen Pro Mini 25, 49, and 61 key versions. The Mini has the smaller keys, the 25, 49 and 61 have the full size semi-weighted keys. There are three main reasons why I went with the Oxygen Pro over other keyboard controllers that are on the market right now. The first reason is that this controller has auto mapping for Pro Tools. I use Pro Tools as my DAW. A lot of other controllers have mappings for other popular DAWs like Ableton Live. But in my case, I use Pro Tools. So I wanted to make sure that the transport controls and everything worked and mapped to Pro Tools. So that comes with it. Second of all is the semi-weighted keys. I was really excited to have a controller with semi-weighted keys even down on this size. I already have the Nord Stage 3, which is 73 keys. I already have the Novation Ultra Nova, which is 37 keys. And so I didn't really feel like there was a benefit with going with a 49 or 61 because I kind of have those bases covered and I wanted something that I could travel with that would be light enough to throw in a suitcase if I wanted to. This is a little heavy, it will add some weight. I'll just have to leave some other things, maybe my clothes home so I can bring this along. But anyway, the third reason that I went with this controller is because it has built into the controller, has smart cord and smart scale features. My hope is that I can take this and plug it into my Nord Stage 3, throw a pad, turn on the smart cord and can just play one note, which will play a chord for that pad while I'm playing piano on the Nord Stage 3. That's my hope. I'll do a video on that as I experiment with it. But let's talk about the controls here. So we've got over here on the very left-hand side, we have a volume knob. Feels really good. There's a little wiggle left and right, but it feels pretty solid. We've got buttons here, plasticky, but they have a decent feel to them. We've got eight knobs across the top here. These feel decent. They're not rubbery. They're just a, a plastic feel and they are not uh, 360, they have a start and stop point at the bottom and the top of the range. So there's eight of those. We've got two rubbery buttons over here. These buttons feel a little bit differently than all the rest of these 
plasticky buttons. Then we've got 16 velocity sensitive pads here. Great for playing drums, triggering instruments, etc. They also perform some of the DAW functions. So you'll see here, DAW knob control. You can pick volume, pan, device, send, and then control those values with the knobs up here. We also have some DAW shortcuts, undo, view, quantize, and save. And then up here on the four first knobs, we've got type, octave, gate, and swing. My guess is that those have to do with the smart cording or the arpeggiation functions within the keyboard. So then down here on the lower left, we have the pitch wheel, the mod wheel. Both of these feel really good. And then over here, we've got 25 semi-weighted keys. I feel like they're just a little bit lighter than maybe the Nord Stage 3 semi-weighted. But they have a really nice bounce to them. They feel really good and they're not clicky like some of your cheap controllers are. Now remember, these have aftertouch to them, so we'll explore that when we get in and plug this into the computer and try it out. We also have a little bitty screen right here, a selector knob you can push to enter. And that's how you modify some of the modes within here. We'll get into that in the technical review as I dig into this keyboard more. On the back, we have a MIDI out. Because this is a keyboard controller, there's no use in sending a MIDI in because there's no sounds in the keyboard to play. So even if you fed a MIDI signal back into this, it would produce no sounds. Um, so they only give you a MIDI out. The USB, a sustain pedal port, which I love when they throw a sustain pedal port on a small controller like this, uh, makes for playing a lot of instruments much nicer. And then a power switch over here to control the power of the keyboard. Overall feels really good on the bottom. We have some nice large rubber feet here and then a little groove down the middle here. It actually makes it really nice to grab with one hand. The body of this is plastic, which is what I would expect for a controller in this price range. Um, but overall has a really nice feel, sticks really well to the table, doesn't slide around because of those nice rubber feet on the bottom. And in regards to the weight, I think there's two ways of looking at this. The pros of having a controller that's a little heavier is it doesn't bounce or slide around as much when you're playing it. So it feels really solid. The keyboard's not bouncing around at all when I play. And I'm a hard player, so I tend to bang on those keys more than I should. On the flip side, if you're traveling with this, if you're throwing it in your backpack or your bag, it's gonna get a little heavier than some controllers. The other controller I have is quite a bit lighter than this. And I'll do a comparison video between the two controllers coming soon. So be on the lookout for that. If you guys have questions, if you're looking to pick up the brand new M-Audio Oxygen Pro, whether it's the 25, 49, 61, or the mini version, throw your questions in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. I'm gonna be getting to know this keyboard really well over the next few weeks. I'll be sharing what I learned with you in upcoming videos, so make sure you're subscribed, hit the bell, so you get notified first when those videos come out. I hope this has been fun for you. I'm really excited to try out this new controller and excited to try some of the chord scale features along with my Nord Stage 3 along with some virtual instruments. The very next video for this controller is gonna be getting set up with your computer, connecting, downloading the drivers and software, and then getting it working with Pro Tools. So watch out for that. In the meantime, stay inspired and keep making that music.